and um, in this video I would like to discuss the phases of the project development life cycle uh, this video bu builds on the uh, previous video that talks about uh, project development life cycle the diagram here from chapter 2 of our textbook uh, is a subset of the previous diagram 2.7 um, and um, it only lists the initial uh, or the, the, the top four activities or disciplines in the um, project development. The uh, vertical line here represents um, the project life cycle, the time, project time, so this is time. The uh, point uh, zero here is the uh, project initiation point, point zero. And the ending here, this is the project ending time. And, uh, and these are the activities that we do. And this uh, diagram represents the percentage effort. Uh, here what you can see is the percentage effort, how much effort I'm spending at any point in time on any of these activities. So if you uh, cut across uh, something like this, uh, that tells you that we are spending that much time or effort at this if this is day one or, the, or like a certain day or a week that uh, we have a team working on business modeling spending that many hours we have a team uh, working on requirements spending that many hours we have a team working on design a team working on implementation and if you go back to the previous diagram uh, we have a team working on uh, the different things testing and so on and so forth what you see different in this diagram that we haven't seen in the other one is the classification of some time segments in the project life cycle into phases. So there are four phases in the project development life cycle. And as you can see, they are not equal on the time uh, with respect to the time you spend. The first phase is called inception. This is the initiation of the project. The second phase is called elaboration, third phase is called construction, and the fourth phase is called transition. The inception phase, as the name suggests, this is where you launch the project. Uh, what does that mean? Meaning that this is where you uh, spend time on, on, on the domain, it is where you uh, kind of estimate the time, decide what your iterations will look like, and iteration is a vertical uh, slice in time so you can decide that I'm gonna take uh, all of this together here and that will be an iteration so this will be two weeks or three weeks whatever that is so this is what we would do in inception once elaboration comes in that's when you elaborate on the project so you see considerable time is spent on business modeling in fact very little time after the elaboration phase is spent on business modeling uh, then there is a, a lot of time on requirements. This is the largest probably uh, time spent on requirement is done in this phase uh, compared to the other phases. Uh, there is a significant time spent on design, although design continues strongly with us. There is a little time spent on coding, although there is some time spent on coding here. This is where you uh, try out new ideas, create uh, templates create uh, prototypes for different functions and different activities of the project. Each one of those dotted lines may represent an iteration. So as you can see here, the inception phase represents one iteration and uh, the elaboration has uh, three iterations in it. Iteration 1, iteration 2, and iteration 3. And then the construction has several iterations going through here and then the transition which is transitioning the project from the development to the deployment. Uh, it's important to notice that the number of iterations and the duration of each iteration is totally up to you as you design um, and uh, analyze the problem and, and, and manage, decide how you're going to manage the project life cycle. But this is something you work on and you do in the inception phase uh, in the beginning, which could be uh, several hours on a small projects, it could project, it could be a few days, few weeks, and so on and so forth. 
Um, as we discussed in the previous video, in each one of those iterations, you cut vertically, so you go through all the activities vertically, and when you're done, you go back to the second iteration, and you continue going vertically, then you go back to another one, and so on and so forth. We do not go horizontally. Uh, this is called the waterfall model, and uh, it has been proven to uh, not to be uh, very useful. So what is our class, the System Analysis and Design class, uh, uh, is about? Uh, this class covers the inception phase and the elaboration phase. Uh, so there are four iterations. And if you look at the book, uh, and let's uh, maybe clean up a little bit here. If you look at the uh, table of content of the book, the table of content is uh, divided into uh, iterations. So uh, in the beginning here, uh, there is the first part, which is introduction, the first three chapters. Then the book is divided in uh, five other parts. Uh, the first part represents the inception phase. The second part represents the first iteration of the elaboration phase. The third part, uh, the fourth part is the second iteration of the elaboration. Then the fourth iteration of the elaboration phase uh, that's when the majority of your requirement and design uh, takes place. And then the last part is some additional uh, topics. Um, in the System Analysis and Design 1, you covered uh, primarily the inception phase and the first iteration in the elaboration phase. Uh, some of you may have went a little bit into the part 4 uh, and went into the second iteration. Uh, but I am assuming that everybody who took System Analysis and Design 1 uh, ended at the end of the first iteration. So the class gives you the time you need to go through iteration 2 and iteration 3. So what is in iteration 2 and iteration 3? Uh, there is still a little bit of business modeling, but there is a lot of requirement analysis and there is a lot of design. And that's where, as you will see, going through the different chapters in each one of those parts, and, and if you look at the syllabus and the table of content, um, the, these two iterations, uh, or the requirements and the design, takes a significant part of our uh, discussion and our time uh, in this class. So spend your time going through the chapters. Every chapter varies in size and uh, some of them are only few pages some are longer than that uh, so please go ahead and, and spend time reviewing the first week i gave it to review in the first phase and the, uh, the the inception phase and the first iteration of the elaboration and you have your first project which will be due in i believe end of week three of the class uh, which will uh, be a review of the documentations that need to be produced so what we are learning in this class really is each one of those activities has a specific time in the project development life cycle. Uh, at the end of this class, if you have a solid understanding of how these um, activities are distributed across the lifetime of the project, this will be a great plus. The second thing that we need to learn from in this class is, or that, that, that I, I hope you learn at the end of this class is what kind of uh, documents uh, you have to produce at the end of each one of those activities. For, what do I mean by this? You see here in the inception phase there's some business modeling and then we move to requirement. Alright, when we finish those, this is stuff that we're doing in business modeling, what do we produce? Is there like a problem statement document that I have to have? Is there a domain model document that I have to have? And then moving into requirement, and I am spending some time. What documentations do I need to produce at the end of that to help us moving forward, but also help us as we go through the time of the project? This is an iterative development. So when I come at this particular time of the project, and I decide that I need to come back to something I worked on here and see what decisions I made or make some adjustments to it 
because that's that's what this time is here for it's here to make some adjustment i need to have some solid documentation that i can go back to and um here and and you probably know that some of these projects extends over several months and the people who work on requirements at the beginning of the project may not be the same people who work on requirement on the at the end of the project uh, the people who work on the implementation may be in a whole different country than the people who work on the design and people who work on design in at, at one of those iterations may be different than those in a different iteration. So documentations and standardizing the documentations that we produce at the end of each discipline, each activity, at each time. So business modeling in inception has some documents. In elaboration, it has some other documents and so on and so forth. So is requirement and so is design. And that's what we are learning in this class. So there is, as so you say, standard documentation. What do I really mean by standard? Who puts that standard? Um, in system analysis and design, there are multiple standards. The one that we are following or that this book follows something called the Unified Process, which is uh, currently owned by uh, IBM. And one of your papers is uh, to investigate a software called the Rational Software, uh, produced by IBM to help uh, manage this entire process and all the documentations that comes with it. The documentations are written in a design language called uh, UML, Unified uh, Modeling Language, and this UML or Unified Modeling Language will be the language that uh, that specifies diagrams, it specifies a certain way of uh, documenting some uh, effort that we do, some analysis effort, some design effort. So we're going to be following the unified process, meaning that uh, this is the standard documents we're going to follow, and we will write those documents following the unified modeling uh, language. So uh, an additional bonus of taking this class that you get to understand the unified process and that you get to be uh, hopefully an expert on the unified modeling uh, language. So I hope this gave you this video and the previous one give you a, a, a good overview of what this class is about and how you navigate and how and, and keep you focused on uh, what is it that you need to come out uh, from this class. An understanding of the lifetime, what we do and what time do we spend, which is this diagram and the brief diagram from the previous video. And the second thing is what documentations need to exist at the end of each activity at each time and uh, have a good hands-on experience in writing those documentation. Uh, thank you and uh, talk to you later in a new video.